Warning, the following video contains spoilers for Marvel Spider-Man 2's main story. Alright, you've been warned. Well, Marvel Spider-Man 2 finally released since the first Marvel Spider-Man released on the PS4 back in 2018. And after Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales released on the PS4 and PS5 back at the end of 2020. These were both extremely well-made games and a welcome addition to the superhero genre that the Batman Arkham series had introduced a long time ago. But how does the official sequel to the first game hold up? In my opinion, pretty well. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the beginning of Marvel Spider-Man 2 and work our way to the Platinum Trophy. We start the game with an amazing introduction level that brings both of our main heroes back into action. Now that we've played the previous Spider-Man games, we're familiar with both Peter and Miles' fighting styles, but we'll be getting great additional moves added to them later on. Once we complete the introduction level with Sandman, we receive a trophy for beating the first mission of the game. And also since we're going to be switching between both Peter and Miles at this time, we're able to get a second trophy for fighting the science trophy that Miles placed in the cathedral where he last spoke with Finn. And also another trophy for landing on our face by doing air tricks. We do a couple of air tricks while swinging through the city and earn ourselves another trophy while we keep progressing through the main story. What? You thought we were going to leave all the miscellaneous trophies after beating the main story? Think again, we do these as we progress. We decide to give Brooklyn High some help with Miles and earn ourselves another trophy for doing so. And also a new costume for us to use. Since we were done with those trophies, it was time to progress the main story with Peter to earn ourselves the web line, and start working our way to earning the trophy for doing 25 stealth takedowns while using the web line. We got this while going through one of Kraven's hideouts. But then came the time to get probably one of the saddest trophies in the game, which was helping Howard's Pigeons find a new home. We went with Peter for this one, since it makes the most sense due to his relationship with Howard. Now that we were done getting some emotional damage, we managed to find all of Marco's memory fragments to reach the end of his side mission, also awarding us a trophy in the process. Great conclusion to Marco's side mission and relieved of not getting more emotional damage. While swinging around the city, there were a couple of Tinkerer loot crates that kept spawning everywhere. As we were doing other side missions and crimes in progress, we would encounter these crates and collect the tech parts that were stashed inside. This alongside any side missions that awarded tech parts would reward us with the resourceful trophy, which was to collect a total of 10,000 tech parts. Not even halfway through the main story, and we already got this trophy. Neat! After completing a main story mission involving music history with Miles, we went straight into completing the rest of it as a side mission and not only have a cool history lesson in music, but also a nice trophy to go with it. We kept progressing through the main story once again, completing the first MJ mission given to us, kick some ass with Peter and Harry, and then died. But then came back to life with the symbiote suit on us, showing us what will be coming our way in the next events and the new moveset that Peter gets from the symbiote. Since we got the symbiote suit, you would expect us to only use symbiote abilities from this point onwards, but nope. We still had one trophy to get using Peter's spider arm abilities, which was to defeat 100 enemies with those abilities. Once that was done, we just stuck with the symbiote abilities until they would ultimately be taken away from us due to story reasons in the future. Now that Peter was on his origin story to becoming an edgelord, we decided to postpone that origin story for a bit and finish up the rest of the photo ops and collect the pending prowler stashes that were left behind, while also getting a trophy for equipping a suit style. Yes, we just got that trophy because we didn't equip a suit style on both Peter and Miles. And then came the sword trophy, 
which was to travel from the financial district to Astoria using only the web wings. We planned our route from the financial district and found as many wind tunnels as possible, intersecting from the six bridges and using many of the straight wind tunnels to elevate and speed us up as much as possible until we eventually reached our goal and earned our trophy. Since we were also upgrading our gadgets this whole time, we were able to upgrade our last gadget shortly after gliding from the financial district to Astoria. Guess all that exploring and dealing with crimes in progress helped out a lot in the long run. We were able to get all of our gadget updates quickly due to us also completing all of the Mysteriums and then beating some sense to Mysterio to earn us another trophy for completing his side mission. As Peter, we went to visit Aunt May's grave, although we probably should have done this earlier before getting the symbiote suit, since his edginess has started to grow more as we progress. But we still got a trophy out of this. To deal with little set edginess, we went to take down the rest of the hunter bases and finished up the rest of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man requests. This awarded us with two trophies, but our edginess kept growing. Now that we got those out of the way, we started chasing down a couple of mechanical birds around the city to collect their data and see who their target was, not only teasing the future villain, but also earning us another trophy. Then came the Spiderbot Origin side mission, which we'll admit had a pretty disappointing ending. What? No glitchy enemies to take down? A little scene of e either Peter or Miles going into the Spiderverse? No! None of that, just a cutscene referencing the movie, and that's it? We should have kept those spider bots. But at least we got a trophy for our troubles. Let's keep progressing the main story and start getting sassy now. We went into the sewers to now teach the lizard who's boss around here. Smacking him around until we forced him to take his medicine and go back to being Dr. Connors awarding us with another story related trophy. Since that was done with, we kept swinging through the city to progress the main story, as not many side missions were left for us to take care of, but we did manage to get another trophy after completing another main story mission, which was to reach maximum level. We spent a lot of our time completing side missions that we got this before we removed the symbiote suit. Now that we were at maximum level, we were trying to escape from Craven's arena as Miles and received a new evolved Venom ability, the Reverse Flux, which in using it with multiple enemies, awards us with a trophy. We also finished this main mission to earn us another trophy. We then proceeded to beat up Craven with Peter and beat up Peter with Miles to remove the symbiote suit and his edginess. but we ended up losing the symbiote suit, alongside its abilities. But at least we got a trophy, so it wasn't all that bad. But then we got some of the coolest segments in the game, playing as Venom himself. 
This was a great segment that not only gave us a fun time, but also a trophy for causing chaos. Oh, and Kraven got chomped. Anyways, well, since we caused chaos with Venom in the previous mission, the whole city was now filled with symbiotic enemies, which was a great opportunity for us to get our final suit tech upgrade and earn ourselves a trophy for doing so. Now there wasn't an excuse if we ended up getting our butts kicked in future main story and side missions, in which we proceeded to wrap up Yuri's final side mission, get a tease at another villain, and earn ourselves another trophy for doing so. We then went to beat up MJ, I mean Scream, we beat up Scream with Peter. Forcing the symbiote out of MJ and awarding us with another trophy. Since we were starting to get close to the end of the game, we unfortunately left one trophy out, which was to defeat 100 enemies with evolved Venom abilities. And since symbiotic enemies were already roaming around the city, it made getting the trophy harder, since symbiotic enemies can tank way more hits. It didn't help that we were in spectacular difficulty. But soon the symbiotes would be running away, once we got one of the coolest additions with Peter, the anti-venom suit. Not only did Peter now do extra damage to symbiotes with his abilities, but it also awarded us with a trophy for defeating an enemy that was under the effect of the anti-venom status. Oh, how the tables have turned. The anti-venom suit was now something that we would be using for the rest of the symbiote nets, which ultimately made completing these much easier. Not only giving us a trophy for completing all symbiote nets, but also one for 100%ing all districts. No more side missions left for us to complete, it was just a straight path to all the main story missions now. Or so we thought. There were only two other miscellaneous trophies we could get before completing the main story. One was to round the bases in the Big Apple Baller Stadium, which was pretty simple, it was just a matter of finding it. And the other was to use symbiote abilities 25 times while in symbiote search. This one was pretty missable, since we wouldn't use symbiote abilities while in search mode, so we made it a priority to use abilities in search mode to avoid missing this trophy. Now it was time to reach the conclusion to the main story and earn ourselves another trophy. The main story of the game was amazing, but we still had two trophies left to earn our Platinum Trophy, which was to complete the last EMF experiment and to purchase all suits, in which we were only missing one that was available to us after the main story concluded. We quickly completed the last EMF experiment, got a final message from Harry, and received our last suit, awarding us with the last two trophies we needed and the Platinum all done with only one playthrough. There aren't any tough trophies to get in Marvel Spider-Man 2, but we will say that some can be extremely missable or pretty grindy to get, but the ranking for the top 3 hardest trophies would be the following. Third place goes to using the webline to stealth take down 25 enemies. Since there aren't a lot of stealth segments in this game, it can be pretty missable if you're just going into the action. Second place goes to beating up 100 enemies using evolved venom abilities. This is due to these abilities not really doing a lot of damage to enemies, 
They may be stylish when combined with other combo moves, but can be a chore if left for when the game already has symbiotic enemies. First place goes to gliding from the financial district to Astoria. This one can be a little challenging, since you do need to plan your route to avoid losing both height and speed, but can be done with a little practice and planning. We recently replayed Spider-Man 2 for the channel, reliving both the main story and having some fun along the way. It's safe for us to say that we really enjoyed our time with this game, an extremely great addition to our libraries. We hope this game, along its previous and future entries, get remembered for the long run as the Arkham series have at this point. See you around.